So what is going on everybody? It is me Devil Never Cry and of course I'm back with the video I'd said I'd make at the time of this trailer's release. Yes, that's right. Today we're going to be delving into the Game Awards trailer. We're going to be attempting to do a step-by-step -step breakdown and analysis of what we can see. Along with this, I'll be giving my own thoughts and speculations as to what certain things may or may not mean. So with that introduction out of the way, let's just dive right in. We've got a lot to dig into considering this is a four minute trailer. So yeah, I mean, it's got the 18 rating standard. Um, Xbox, what? Oh, oh my god, the biggest uh, the biggest data dump ever. Capcom's developing this game, I jest. Let's get into the real nitty gritty here. First of all, we seem to be somewhere in this hellscape. Um, I believe this might be the core of the tree. Um, this being the throne room. If you look closely, you can see some explosions going off. Um, things are going down. Maybe something's being summoned, or maybe this is the end of the game where things are being destroyed. So, we're still in this hellscape, or the tree. I'll just reference it as the tree from now on. We see the Kalina Anne here in its state that we all know and love from DMC3. You know, black sort of barrel, um, you know, brown grip. You know, the very same. However, I'd like to note that during, like, during the trailer, we see it in another form where it's been revamped, redesigned, reestablished. Um, that can only possibly mean one thing. This version here was likely destroyed. Um, and, you know, if you've played DMC3, you know it takes a lot for this to be destroyed, considering it took a blow from the Yamato itself. So, this leads me to believe that the protagonists <clears throat> attempt to fight the main villain, probably get their ass handed to them, then they come back, train, you know, after they've trained and re-equipped themselves um, to potentially prevail the second time around. Um, that's the only other way you can sort of justify there being another Kalina Anne that was made specifically for Lady, even though Dante does use it. I'd also like to note that I'm not going to be using any, I'm talking about any spoilers in this video, considering there are people out there who want to keep themselves unspoiled and enjoy videos like these. But we see Lady, human, get her ass handed to her, but then, oh wait, we see Trish as well, flying away with the Sparta, which, you know, it's pretty much almost as big as Trish. We get the monologue. Again, they're still in the hellscape. Or the tree, sorry. I like to make make note, that's a nice character model right there. Very detailed. Again, grimacing. Both of these are both both the ladies, the femme fatales, are down for the count. Then we see Dante here in his devil trigger, very similar to his DMC4 incarnation. As we can see, he seems to be blocking some sort of attack with the rebellion. I'm assuming that's the main villain right there. Let's go back a bit right there. We almost missed something. Right, so he's blown away completely. He can't withstand the impact of this um, attack. We see the main villain here, sitting in his throne of massive deformed skulls. We get that big spirally structure on top. Then the rebellion breaks completely, Dante's knocked out of his devil trigger. Again, keeping in line with a theory that I discussed earlier, stating that a demon's, um, well, in particular Dante's sword here, seems to be a physical manifestation of his demonic energy. So if that's gone, he essentially can't tap into his devil trigger. Kind of backed up by the fact here that he's still alive and conscious here, as you can see him grimacing, um, but he was forcefully knocked out of his devil trigger when the rebellion broke. We get a zoom and spin right into somebody's eye, kind of suggesting that this is Dante himself. We've got the long, you know, silvery white hair. We've got a few cuts and bruises, and we seem to have some stubble here. Um, kind of implying this is maybe the aftermath of him being knocked on his ass. We get a look at the main villain in his eye. Then we get a close-up of him here. He seems to be charging some sort of attack, likely at the protagonists. Um, we see some teeth here. I'd initially thought this might have been um, Mundus, but he's got more than three eyes, as we can see. He got one, two, he got three, and four. And as we know, M Mundus only has three. He seems to be resting on his fist here, as if he's bored. Sort of implying that the protagonists are not really a challenge for the villain at all. We see Nero here, just ag <clears throat> again, same sort of thing, Fl like flung away. Um, potentially before or after 
the others get you know wiped out again we can get a better look at this throne really cool we can see all these tendrils sort of streaming into the villain like all these strands of the tree like the roots and then we see the big spirally structure on top yeah nero's down for the count as well it seems he just is flung away similar uh, location here seems to be in the tree the villain finally stands up um, you can see all these eyes and spirals um, integrated into his design this I believe might be from a different cutscene again the lighting and mood is different we see the big spirally structure behind him seem to open up he seems to maybe be summoning something here as the blood sort of bursts through the ground maybe the tree is being fed who knows title drop again we get the spirally structure just opening up then we get a look at Dante opening his eyes, potentially after he was down for the count, maybe after he wakes up from that long nap he discusses in Mission 11, which we see at the TGS uh, gameplay showcase. Uh, cut to V, then we get a cut to Nero here. Again, they seem to be in the tree, so maybe this is before he challenges the villain, especially considering he doesn't have any cuts or bruises on his face. We get flashes to all of the characters. We get a look at Morrison here. That's from the real trailer. Then we get you know more flashes of characters, and then we get a look at the van. Nothing crazy. We get a scene from the introduction here. This is this is confirmed to be from the intro to the game. Um, the intro's up on YouTube. Take a look at it if you will. We get Nero looking out of the van. Nico pulling her shenanigans. This was all seen in the the trailer. All right. Now we get into some new things. So as you can see here, they seem to be in the human world. We've got roads here, seemingly overtaken by this demonic growth that seems to be bursting through the roads and tarmac. Nero then snatches an enemy. It seems to be an enlarged um, red, potentially, blade. It might be... Um, initially, I thought it was those enemies from the reboot... Um, but looking at it closer now, it seems to be just like a, a red demonic blade. It does blade. It might entirely, you know, might be a new, entirely new enemy, sorry, word salad. Um, but it's got an animation um, that we have never seen before. Again, we can get a better look at its sort of armored tail. The more I look at it, the more I do think it's more of like an assault or a blade. Some sort of um, spin off of that demon class. He attempts to retaliate with, you guessed it, blade on his arm. Nero dodges. Just seems to give him a piece of his mind, essentially. I wonder if that, if that, you have to dodge manually there. But he seems to block that as well. Or not really. It looked like he blocked it, but he just got spiked. Time to kick some ass. As you can see, this is the um, right next to the bridge. So this might be. Potential. This might potentially be after, um, or just before he fights that big tentacly monster that we see in the Gamescom trailer that was in, set in the same bridge. Scenes from the demo, we've seen this before, using some Gerbiter. This is new entirely. This is obviously on their way to the tree, um, likely for the second time. Let me, sorry, let me just go back. I believe I almost had missed something. Nope, never mind. Right, so it seems here... I thought I'd seen something for a second. If not, we'll, we'll go back to where we... Were. Right, here we go. I don't know if you can see here very well, but Nero doesn't actually have an arm here. He has nothing. He has sort of like a stub, right? Ind indicating that Nico at this point hadn't made him an arm. However, if we go back here... We can sort of see that Nero does have this arm, implying that this encounter is potentially from a second time round. Some food for thought there. That definitely supports the theory that there's going to be more than one encounter. Maybe it'll be like all the other DMC uh, main villains where we'll have to fight them three times. I say three times, I mean like, you know, the bosses. Very, very staple of the series, fighting bosses multiple times. But he gets spiked back to where we were. 
again on on his way to the tree that the world seems to just be in shambles i don't know how the world's gonna like recover from this but props to them again we see the tower no, sorry not the tower the tree jutting into the air like the temenegru tower then we get the time stop ability again he seems to be in the tree um, likely the second time around or potentially the this is the tree but the entire tree has taken over the world turning it in all of it into some sort of hell we're uncertain at this time he uses the ragtime arm the quicksilver move switches to the overture and gives the enemy a piece of his mind then we get a look at um, Nero in this area this seems to be not the tree this seems to be potentially hell itself he seems to pull something in. The blue glow potentially implies it might be a frost, but it doesn't seem to be a frost. It seems to be some sort of like goat. Please tell me the goat enemies haven't come back from DMC2. No, whatever it is, it seems to have two long horns that obviously Nero's utilizing here to to break it apart. Um, it's got. It seems to have hooves and those like furry like bent legs i'm uncertain as to what this enemy is it's a new enemy type that's for sure we get a look at crew cut here who's in a stunned state nico scares the living bejesus out of him because he you know immediately turns around yep this is another uh, place that was in the demo they see all the most of the gameplay from nero they seem to be showing as demo areas so they don't want to spoil some things again using the rawhide arm to spin people around uh, then we get a look at the tomboy again this seems to be a seems to be the demo area so they seem to be going back to the same area just to show us gameplay yet we don't know when we actually get these arms right so we get some new things here another look at the blue rose similar to what we saw before this definitely seems to be in hell somewhere because this is a boss fight this seems to be like it reminds me of Griffin, like a like a featherless Griffin, absolutely disgusting and creepy. Um, but as you can see, definitely somewhere in hell. Like there's no way this is anywhere in the human world or in the demon tree because we already know what the inside of the demon tree looks like. Or maybe this might be part of the demon tree itself. Doesn't matter. Let's go back a bit here. So no feathers, uh, bony, spindly arms, and then we seem to get some sort of figure stuck to the top of this boss that Nero seems to be able to attack potentially this might be another Angelo enemy that's utilizing something else we don't know but there's definitely something on the back that we get a see we get a decent look at here you know Nero taunting the boss let's go for a walk a little cheeky back onto the bridge he seems to use the overture arm um, this doesn't seem to actually be a boss. We see these things sprouting around everywhere. They're the roots of the demon tree, it looks like. But I don't think there's any actual way to remove them all. Then we seem to get what looks like a con like a cutscene, or maybe some sort of context-sensitive action here. Maybe like a buster grab. We get a look at another boss. This seems to be the Empusa boss. Um, this seems to be somewhere in some sort of like Colosseum. But, um, yeah, by the Impusa boss, I mean the boss that has the wings that fired all the Artemis-like uh, rays of light. But good to see, you know, of course, we this is just another context-sensitive buster action. You can rev that Red Queen whilst it's embedded. He seems to bust uh, a uh, lower-class Angelo enemy. This entire building seems to be moving and collapsing, so that's cool. As you can see, the background sort of scroll there. Then we get, uh, you know, again, another look at sort of like a power bomb move. And at the same time, we have V styling away there in the corner. Um, you blink and you miss it using the griffin there. Then we get another look. Um, again, this seems to be somewhere in the tree. Um, another buster um, context sensitive action here where he just slams this enemy here. Reminds me somewhat of like the centipede with all these sort of carapaces filthy but he's covered absolutely covered in blood here which is cool just slick with it we can see the buster arm <laughs> the massive arm there it looks kind of a uh, 
cartoonish. But then we get a close-up of this thing's face. Again, just like the other demons, it seems to be made up of humans. As we can see, its face is made up of multiple human faces. But then we get a look at the inside of the van, and we get a look at the two, two of the three protagonists. We got Nero on the right, V on the left, with all his tattoos and all his glory. Um, and they're discussing splitting up. Who knows if that's actually what they're discussing, considering that that audio is overlaid from somewhere else. Then we get a look at V and his griffin, his familiar, smirking here. That's a massive bird, massive wingspan. Um, we can hear it talking in the background, purple feet, or the graffiti. They seem to be walking through the streets. So it hasn't got that bad yet. Um, the world hasn't been completely destroyed just yet, but it has been um, abandoned, you could say. They seem to be obviously in the UK because, you know, if you live anywhere in an urban area in the UK, you'll see the um, the these sort of orange um, partitions and, you know, the bollards and, and whatnot. But then we get a look at Shadow, who seems to have taken on a different look, more modernized. Good for it, but I honestly prefer the DMC1 incarnation where it looked like a literal shadow. Right, so there we can see that's when he encounters some of those mosquito-like enemies. We can see him using an attack here. The tree's just over there in the background. Some scaffolding. We seem to be on the rooftops. Um, then we cut back to gameplay of the streets. Nice enemy there, just repeatedly running into a pole. Great programming there, guys. Looking fantastic. But we get a look at V fighting some more enemies. Um, though that bird, um, you know, sort of guessed it considering there were like blue wings in the actual logo of the game. But Shadow uses the spike attack, the enemies just get destroyed. We can see more throwbacks to DMC1. There, you see, I think now this reminds me more of Blades or Assaults. Just larger and just steroided up. Look at a lot more vicious too. We get the summoned cane or summoned swords ability. Looks hilarious with canes, I'm not gonna lie. Then we, you know, he's like what evil lurks. This seems to be a cutscene um, where the two s sort of, you know, some downtime between the two. Nero is just turning to him like, what the fuck are you talking about, bro? Like, Jesus. Now's not the time to be in your feelings, bro. Cavaliere enemy here just seems to run him through. He pulls an Eisen because we're bleach now and is like, well, you know, since when were you under the impression that I was a pitiful human? And then with a click of his of his fingers, V gets his titular white hair. I say titular because now that this has been released, this is like all anybody talks about when they talk about V. Like, why has he got white hair? Why do his tattoos disappear? Well, I do have a video on that. But then he seems to summon this meteor. Um, he's got his white hair here. Um, we, uh, we're Final Fantasy VII now, guys. Uh, <laughs> summoning meteors. Then we get a look at Nightmare. They seem to be in a train yard here. We get these... Wait, no, those aren't balloons, my bad. I thought they were balloons for a second, but they're just red orbs. Telling, Kind of telling you, yeah, hey guys, why don't you just start jumping over here? Funnily enough, I wonder if V will even have access to an air hike. We get a look at some new enemy types here, in fact, if you look rather closely. They seem to be violet, um, like blue-winged bats. And we see Nightmare just burst on through as V does his slow pimp walk. Again, they seem to be just destroying some scaffolding. Then we seem to be in some sort of tunnel, some un or potentially underground tunnel, where we see more tendrils uh, of the tree, the roots. But then we see Nightmare pop up to just, you know, clear the way it seems, and that before he dis disappears. And we get a look at an opening here. Then we get a look at another boss, it seems. This seems, they seem to be in some sort of tr train station I'm I'm wanna say but this kind of reminds me of uh, the Joker Gulm boss from Devil May Cry 2 like the tentacly thing either that or the 
Argusax sort of amalgamation of things. Mainly because it's so grotesque and obviously there's tendrils. But then they have faces on the tendrils and mouths. Kind of reminds me of the Hydra, but again, this seems to be embedded in some sort of train station. Makes sense considering we've seen the characters go through a train station themselves. But he uses Nightmare to just destroy the boss. And then it cuts to him using the same attack on an enemy. We've seen this enemy with the meat cleavers before, they're nothing new. But he teleports. And as we can see here, V has got his white hair, but he has no tattoos. Kind of going along with the whole limiter thing. Or theory. We see him riding Nightmare, which is interesting. Got his cane just embedded. Then we get a look at the initial meeting between Dante and V. Inside the Devil May Cry office, Dante's got his picture of a pizza. Uh, he's got more pizza boxes over here. Um, you know, a little, little bit of light stubble on his face, you know, maybe before things really kick off. Why don't you tell him everything about that job? We can see here V fighting Goliath. Rather interesting, considering... Ooh, so we see here Goliath seems to be rather purple. Maybe this is after Nero fights him. Because if you remember, Nero was looking for V when he runs into Goliath. But then after um, he beats Goliath, unfortunately we don't really know um, much because obviously they, they cut the cutscene right there so they don't spoil us. But um, I'm willing to bet that this happens after maybe Nero's taking a back seat relaxing whilst V cleans up here. After maybe Goliath gets a second wind. But I'm just trying to look for, for Nero anyway here but it doesn't look like he's actually there. But the world is more messed up at that point, so... Uh, this is when he tells Dante, you know, we need your help. That ominous look, I don't trust him one bit. Then we get a close-up of um, Dante using the Dr. Faust hat, which I believe is his official name, with the red scarf. Uh, posing with the likes of Jojo here, we see Cerberus on his back. He seems to be fighting an Angelo enemy. Um, things seem to have progressed quite a bit. I don't know if this is in the tree or they're actually in hell. But it does look like things have gotten worse. He points. Look at that smirk. Jesus. Cut back to what looks like more footage from like Mission 11 where he wakes up in that graveyard slash cemetery. Still in the urban environment is what I'm trying to say. Using the dance macabre move. Then we get the meeting of all three. I'm assuming this is like the second time round, the second fight round, because uh, Nero. Well, saying that, can we even get a look at Nero's arm? No, we don't get a look at Nero's arm, which is interesting. But this could either be from the first or second um, time round. I'm maybe thinking it's the second time round, considering. Dante's hair has grown from when obviously V brought him that job. Um, I can't tell if his hair has grown or if it's just because it's been un it's uncombed. Um, of course, this dude's falling apart. He's got cracks everywhere in his skin. You know, just literally chipping away. You got a duty to see that through. Is that even th from the same scene though? That's the question. Considering over there, it's like really red. And behind him it's not. But then we get a look at Dante fighting some nobodies. That's cool. We get another look at what seems to be hell. Because as you can see this is a different landscape to what was in the tree. Um, he's using the, the Faust weapon. We can see the hat just over there. Um, again, this seems to be in hell. Fighting some sort of large tentacly monster. Um... And then he seems to summon the, the orb meteor with the hat, which is a move we've seen before. Then we get a look at Dante, um, this time at night, riding his motorcycle in an urban landscape. Maybe this is, this looks like the same, the very same bridge that Nero um, was seen fighting on. Get the ambulance there. Uh, we've got the demon here T-posing, because, you know, showing dominance. Seems to have the Faust head at this point. But then again, yeah, as I said, this seems to be the very same bridge. 
This seems to be after the Cavaliere fight, after Trish has been released. Um, as you can see, her clothes seem to have um, physically manifested, so she's no longer naked. And then we see like the lightning just slip right back through her cleavage onto her choker. Subtlety is not an art, it seems. We see Dante using the King Cerberus weapon, um, twirling that bow star, fighting the Halcana, which are a throwback to the DMC3 enemies. Then we get a look at Dante um, fighting King Cerberus yet again, using the very same lines that he used uh, against Cerberus back in DMC3, which I believe at this point was over 20 years ago. Take you out for a walk, you, you wish. Um, then we seem to see these tendrils, I believe these might be the roots of the tree, just streaming across the sky, kind of implying they're still in the human world. However, as I said, things seem to have got progressively worse and worse, because now the entire world is looking desolate. We get a better look at things here. What enemy was he fighting there? I couldn't make note of that. Oh, it's just still the same sort of hell um, enemies. Then we get a look at a cutscene here where we don't really get a look at what exactly he's what he's fighting. But he seems to split the ground apart. Maybe this is the cutscene that we get after he gets the weapon. Sort of as, you know, like a throwback to DMC 3 and 4. You know, after he got the weapon, whatever weapon it may be, he seemed to style out around with it for a good 30 seconds to a minute. But here we go with um, another round, it seems. Again, they seem to be somewhere in the human world. They seem to have met up after things had gone worse, from bad to worse, sorry. Approach the van, and there's Nico with the remade um, Kalina Anne. That's what I was referencing. The weapon was initially destroyed, um, but... Obviously, she doesn't actually have a, have it on her, which kind of implies that it was destroyed. There's no Sparta weapon here, though, which is weird. But then we get a look at Cerberus, King Cerberus, might I add. That's his name in this game yet again. Before we get a, another look at the Kalina Anne, where he... Ooh. So that's, first of all, that's a new enemy type. Um, they, there seems to be enemies in cages here, it kind of looks like. Like bone cages. I reckon this is against somewhere in the human world. If we go back, they seem to be somewhere in the tree. He seems to be somewhere in the tree, sorry, when he's using that move. As you can see, you got these sort of tendrils glowing, growing out. That seems to be a new enemy type, but I can't actually make out. Nope, doesn't seem to be a new enemy type, forget that. Seems to be that giant horned enemy we've seen in the TGS showcase. He destroys that enemy. Devil Triggers uses some, uh, what looks like, air raid. He DT Stingers. He uses the King Cerberus weapon. I'm trying to look at where exactly he may be here. Um, again, this this can be a mix, like a throw up between the tree or, the, or hell. Either or, because we've got the red motif, but then... It seems too red to be the tree, if you know what I mean. Right, so then we get a joint cutscene between um, V and Nero. They seem to be somewhere on Earth. They're running through maybe the tra a train station yet again. I don't know why I click that. Let's go back. Right, and here they are, obviously, in the train station, um, co-oping with each other. You know, we get a look at the cameo system here. Um, then we get uh, another meetup between the three protagonists. So they seem to meet up at different points in time, um, obviously at differing levels of um, strength and health and whatnot, because obviously they seem pretty beat up here. They seem to have gone through quite a lot. Um, again, in a dark, desolate environment, which we really haven't seen before, there seems to be a gaping hole in the ground here. Um, this kind of reminds me of like a spider's web. You know, maybe they've run into Phantom somewhere, which I doubt, considering he's dead. But hey, you never know. Things have come back from the dead, like Griffin. So, we seem to... Yeah, so, these glowing tree-like structures, they seem to be everywhere. I'm not exactly sure what their significance is. They could mean something, they could mean nothing. 
I just thought it was rather interesting. We get another look at the cameo system here. More cameo nonsense. There's the blue bat that I was talking about earlier, the new enemy type. She's like, what's happening? Um, I I'd imagine the world is shifting. As you can see, he got chunks of land just floating in the sky. If we go back, we get a look at Trish. This is after Dante leaves, after he saves her from the Cavaliere boss. This, I believe, is almost immediately after that initial scene in the trailer where they get thrown to the ground, both her and Lady. This seems to be when he's first facing the villain. Potentially, this might be King Cerberus. He seems to be using the Sparta Sword here. But, yeah. Then we get a cut back to when they're fighting. This is before the rebellion was broken. Broken, sorry. So this is this definitely is when he's fighting the villain. Obviously, this is a bad move. We get Nero losing his arm, which we've seen before. Then we seem to see these tentacles wrapping around the characters. We see it happening to a lady here. We see it happening to Trish. I believe this like might be after the first encounter where they get turned into Angelo enemies. Then we see. Something happening to Nero here. Note he's uh he's growing his own beard here, madman. But if I go slowly, he seems to be getting sucked getting sucked into something because you can see his necklace here just um you know f not falling naturally down but seems to be pointing up in this direction. We get a worried look on the faces of, of the characters. We get a look at V here falling apart. We get Nero here just wiped out on the floor. Potentially this is after the second attempt of fighting. Then we get a look at the Reforged Rebellion here. That's right. So, as you can see here, the Rebellion is not the same, obviously. It was broken. Um, but if we if we take a look closer look here, we can see this is where the, the ribcage piece of the hilt of the Rebellion is. Um, it's sort of changed. It's very hard to see... Um, what exactly it is. Um, however, this is the new weapon that was sort of featured in that artwork. It's very hard to see the rebellion, but you can see it just there, if you, if you, uh, if you even can. But we get, obviously, the monologue saying that, you, Nero, you need to go, you just dead wait. We get sort of like a soft focus fade to black. Again, you can probably see the ribcage more closely here. This seems to be Dante, though. My bet, um, I've got two theories as to what this may be. The first and most obvious is the Margin DT. The second is the idea of Dante. This is Dante. Let, Jesus, word salad. This is Dante in his Angelo form. Again, he swings the weapon. We get um, some energy here being released in sort of a spiral pattern. But yeah, either this is a DT, the margin DT, or this is him in his Angelo form. I kind of doubt it's the Angelo form, considering he doesn't really have... He doesn't look large enough to, to even actually house Dante in a shell. Second of all, we've seen Dante holding this weapon in some official artwork. Which is rather interesting, in fact. If that's Re Rebellion's new form, um, that's a rather interesting form. It seems to not even be refined, to be honest. It seems very barbaric, but hey, it is a sick-ass design. Then we get the title drop, Devil May Cry. However, at this point, we can see Dante facing Nero, and obviously V facing off to the side. And we get the title drop, Devil May Cry. This is the same sort of artwork we see, it's just now we can see the other characters as the feathers fall. So that's the end of that, but then we get a look at the bloody palace. Um, I find this rather cool, the green sky with sort of like the black sun and the purple flare of light. A new look at a new enemy type here. Looking absolutely grotesque, but I'm liking the aesthetic here for the bloody palace. It's a nice contrast to DMC4's like clean and clinical nature. 
But as we see the light, the sun bleeding into the sky, that about wraps that up. Um, now that was as in depth as I could have made it. I avoided all spoilers as well, um, but I think I, I just about managed to cover everything. So some main things to take away from this. We know that the protagonists face the main villain more than once, implying they fail at first, which is likely what we see in the prologue or how the game opens up. Um, how many times they actually fight, um, we don't know. But yeah, that's rather interesting. That's something that you'd only sort of realize if you took the time to go through, um, as I have sort of like frame by frame, you know, pausing and stopping every like second. But yeah. Is there anything I missed? Let me know down in the comments below. It has been me, Devil Never Cry. I would like to thank you for watching. Um, this has been quite a long video, so thanks for sticking around. And as always, I'll see you next video.